and uh, look at the announcements. There's quite a few. I circled a few of them here. Uh, man, you're, you're going to get tired of eating spaghetti? Once a month. Oh, okay. Anyway, there's a sign-up sheet out there so you can get to know Pastor Kristen and her husband out in the foyer, so be sure to do that. Uh, the fall Sunday schedule, kickoff Sunday will be September 11th, and we will return to 9 a.m. Sunday school, 10.15 worship, 11.15 fellowship. Uh, choir will begin rehearsing on Wednesday, September 7th at 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall, and we'll sing for the first time in church on September 18th. All former and new singers are welcome. There's uh, several other things in here, that, but I guess that's why they give you a bulletin, so be sure to check it out. Please quiet your hearts as we prepare for worship with the prelude and lighting of the candles. Please stand for the call to worship. Welcome to a time of wonder. Welcome to hear God's words that inspire and challenge. Hospitality that teaches us how to open our lives to others. Please remain standing for the opening hymn, uh, number 340. Please remain standing and join me in the opening prayer. God of the widow, of the widow, 
What's that? What? Say what all together? Okay. <laughs> God of the widow. God of the widow at Zaphari. God of Joseph the forgiver. We stand in awe of the people who showed hospitality in the midst of sacrifice and betrayal. Take us deep into the heart of hospitality. Help us to understand that the generosity, the world, Good morning. Well, today we are going to be listening to a scripture that talks about having a big meal. And when we have a big meal, we prepare food. And what are some other things that we do to prepare for a big meal? Big kids can help out. What do we do? We set the table. Absolutely. We usually have some people in the kitchen. Yeah, Willow had a big birthday party yesterday, and we had people in the kitchen, and to make sure that every, you can't have those, honey. Those are lollipops. No, I put a tractor in there for you. Here, this is yours. They get the lollipops. You can have the sunglasses. Okay. So, to be hospitable, we make sure that everyone's got a little bit of something. We prepare the food for people. We prepare a place for them to eat and set the table, and Jesus wanted to make sure that when people came to his dinner table that they were offered the biggest, most important seat. He wanted all the people to have a place to sit and eat and have the place of honor. And it was very important for him. So when you have guests come to your table, give them the nice stuff. That's how we say it in my house. We put out the nice napkins, the nice plates, the good food, and we give them the place of honor. So today, I want you to think about when you eat at your table, having the nice stuff for your friends when they come over. All right. Would you like to keep the sunglasses? Yeah? Okay. All right. All right. And Myra, can you help us sing our prayer? We're going to close in a song called Sanctuary. You ready? This is one that I learned when I was little. Okay. We'll stand up and we'll pray, and Myra will help us. She's going to play the song for us, okay? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you all right Let's go back to our seats and thank God for setting our tables so nice. Okay. It's much easier to do that without my own kid in my hands. Yeah. All right, we get the tractor. Okay. She's like, I want to go with the little kids. Yeah. Teach us to open our shuttered hearts 
and our portioned and bordered up spirits with bold, generous, and with courageous hospitality. Estranged and alienated so often from so much, sustain us in making circles of welcome out of gatherings of strangers. Around the table of wonder, meet us in abundance, drawing out our stories and showing us how to weave together community with steadfast love. The wells of life are our responsibilities. Teach us to care for them together with forbearance, forgiveness, gratitude, and rejoicing. When we are cast out and wandering, may we find welcome and compassion that calls us back into accountable relationship, into the ways of healing, into the ways of peace. Generation after generation has wrestled and with exiled or been dispossessed. Generation after generation has learned anew how to make welcome, how to make home wherever they are, however they are, and to welcome you, beloved, in welcoming enemies, strangers, and exiles into a life of transforming love. We pray all of these words, saying the words your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Join me in prayer. I owned my land. You made my heritage an abomination. The priest, did, the priest did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me, and prophets prophesied by Baal, and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord. I accuse your children's children. Cross the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine distinguishing you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go sit at the lowest place. So when the host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalted themselves will be humbled, and those who humbled themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who invited him, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or your relatives, or rich neighbors, in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you. And thank you, Myra, for the beautiful music. Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Garner United Methodist Church. Whether it is your first Sunday with us or you have been worshiping here your entire life, you are indeed all that we were preparing for Willow, for all of our family and friends to come and celebrate her birthday. We had about 11 people gathered in our home that were pretty important practices that had hindered the most vulnerable people from experiencing Sabbath rest. Walter Brueggemann wrote and named Sabbath rest as protecting the space and property of the neighbor from the restlessness that disrupts and skews social relationships by desisting from acquisitive practices. And we talked about that last week. But in today's text, in Jeremiah, it says, My people have changed their glory for things that do not profit them. They've traded their glory for things that do not profit them. And from this teaching of justice, of Sabbath and healing, we are moved further along in Luke into this dinner party. A dinner party thrown by a leading Pharisee. And here we encounter Jesus lecturing about humility. Noting the rewards we should be concerned about come from God. Jesus was among the well-to-do, the popular, popular folks, the social elites. And this message was again pointed and scathing. Renounce your status. Take the low seat. This to a bunch of people who would have been offended to walk in at a big dinner party and take the low seat. My husband Lucas said that Jesus seemed annoyed in his temperament while attending this dinner. This is not a warm, fuzzy text for Jesus. Jesus' message continues to get more and more uncomfortable the closer that he gets to Jerusalem. Jesus had his sights set on Jerusalem, and the text just before our text today in chapter 13, Jesus said his lament people who would follow him to Jerusalem, the people that would make it to the cross, could not be caught up in a popularity contest. Jesus knew that the people who needed Sabbath rest, a feast and healing, would not be offered the hospitality he was experiencing at this table. Jesus, taking in the atmosphere, disrupted the dinner and used it as an opportunity to clear the pathway to Jerusalem. The tension was getting thick. The stakes were getting higher. Jesus' cross awaited him, and he had to build the community of discipleship up along the way. Jesus taught justice at the table by naming the people who had been kept from the feast, the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Being righteous in the realm of God meant being of service, taking the low seat, offering the better part of the meal, the better seat, to our neighbors without invitations. Jesus is asking us at Garner United Methodist Church to consider who has been kept from the table in this community and to invite them, not just to dinner, but to the seat of honor at the table. This is grace. This is restoration. This is an invitation to discipleship. When we extend an invitation to the feast, when we give up our seat of honor, we honor God. And we honor God's vision of our beloved community. If we can begin to do this important work here, bit by bit, one radical act of grace at a time, one generous invitation extended beyond our comfortable fellowship to the people in this community who are in need of support, in need of honor and love and hospitality, this text tells us that we will reap kingdom benefits. If we do kingdom work on earth, our church will grow beyond our wildest dreams because people are thirsty for living water. People need good news in their lives, and they want to be a part of it. 
if we start to carry this message of humble servanthood from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth, Luke tells us plainly, we will be blessed and we will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. But it likely won't. Amen. As you're able, stand in body and in spirit. So my yeah. mom, she's pretty movie and squawky, but oh, as yeah. long as you're okay with it. Don't like totally <laughs> I think my mic is still on. I'm sorry.